In this video, let's learn about inter-service communication, which basically talks about how microservices talks to other microservices or with each other. So for that, I'm going to take an example of e-commerce order processing microservice or order placing uh, microservices. Uh, let's understand how it was, uh, how it used to be in monolithic and then understand how it will be in microservice. So for example, this would be a function which basically handles placing order. In case of monolithic, it would have been much simpler, right? So this is a function called place order in which there will be uh, three different functionality. The first one is generating bill. As soon as we place an order, uh, I want to generate a bill and then basically I want to update the orders table with all the whatever order we want to place. And then we also notify the merchant that someone has placed an order. In that case, it would have been simple function call because in monolithic, we have all the modules in the same server. So it would have been just a functional call, generate the bill, update orders table and notify merchant, it would have been much easier. Now, so in case of microservices, when a user places an order the, in the micro, order processing microservices, the first thing it will do is generate bill. Since this is not the order processing microservices responsibility, this function should be able to somehow communicate to the billing microservice and get that thing done. How we can do is, as we learned based on, uh, we can do it in two ways. One is based on HTTP, the other one is RPC call, or you can do in many ways, but these are the two ways which everyone prefers because of simplicity and usability and all the purpose. Um, so when, when we want to do this action, what we have to do is somehow we have to call this microservice and tell, give all the arguments which we needed, and then it executes here. As I mentioned, two ways is either we can do HTTP call or RPC call and then we get the response back. And then we basically do the update orders table. This is actually the responsibility of the order processing microservices that actually runs locally, uh, basically in the same instance. And then we have to execute notify merchant. This is not the order processing uh, microservices responsibility. So we have to, again, call merchant microservice in uh, it's the same way, either by HTTP or RPC. Okay, and then we get back the response and we can now give back the response. The request started here and the response after finishing all of this work. There are so many advantages and disadvantages um, doing this way. So what we are doing here is basically we're making a synchronous call from order processing microservices to billing microservices. And the, similarly, there are like two different synchronous call, right? So this is not really the ideal way to do uh, all the time. So there are, let's learn how, uh, what are the different advantages and disadvantages of using synchronous calls between microservices and also learn how do we do using asynchronous um, calls. So let's understand what is synchronous inter microservice communication. As I have already explained, uh, synchronous um, microservice communication is basically calling different microservices synchronously. Say so this is client, this is API gateway. When a client makes a call to API gateway, this is going to call the microservice one. And this microservices need some data from microservice two. What is happening, actually happening is making a synchronous call in real time from microservice one to microservice two over REST or RPC, whatever. And then waits until this microservice two uh, returns the response. And then it does whatever processing it is supposed to do and then returns the response to API Gateway and then API Gateway returns back to the client. So this whole cycle is basically synchronous way of uh, communicating between microservices. So what are the advantages of having a synchronous um, intercommunication between microservices is, first of all, it is very easy to implement because we are all familiar with REST and HTTP calls. So it is much easier to implement intercommunication between microservices and um, easy to handle different use cases as well, uh, different errors, because we know what error uh, the other services written immediately in real time. So we can make our immediate decision and return back the response. That's one advantage. And the second one is real time because we get the responses in real time. Even though it is calling many microservices, this could be calling one more microservices, but we get the real-time response. It's not like we are waiting for something to happen in the backend 
Um, and then it's not really asynchronous, but it's like we get the response back with the, for the same API call. So these are the advantages. And also, what are the disadvantages, if you ask? The first one is service availability. What does it mean is, say, for example, we are making a call to microservice one, and microservice one is making one more call to microservice two. This expects this service to be always available. For some reason, if this service is down, then the request, we won't get the complete response we were supposed to uh, written by the microservice one because this service is down. We can't really get the um, information which we needed from the microservice two. So we always uh, expect this microservice to be up and running when MS1 microservice one is also up and running. This kind of violates the sole purpose of going to microservice uh, microservices architecture because we always want these microservices to be uh, isolated or you know um, to be independent of the other microservices. But if we really need uh, to be com communicated, we have to have a synchronous um, communication between them. But what happens now is because this is not available, this service is also dependent on this service. So basically we have a tightly kind of coupled uh, services here. But there are some use cases which we can't escape. In that case, it's fine to have a synchronous communication between them. Um, the next thing is uh, response time, the increased uh, latency or uh, the response time of the request. Um, what could happen is, what if microservice one is calling microservice two and microservice is also calling microservice three, three is calling four, four is calling five. What if this hop is too many in that and all communications are happening in a synchronous way, then there is, there are, there is, latency added between every call from microservice to microservice, then we might be, um, you know, uh, expecting a lot of latency or delay in the response in the in this call. So that's one more problem. So always the idea is if for sure, if you know the other services, the dependent services are always high available and they always return a response immediately within with a matter of millisecond or, you know, less than a second, then it's always good to have a, a you know, synchronous communication between microservices. Otherwise, it is always good to consider asynchronous way of intercommunication between microservices. Now, let's understand asynchronous inter-service communication model. So in this case, suppose if our client wants to talk to this microservice one, it, all, it makes a call to API Gateway and then API Gateway makes a call to microservice one. And here we have a synchronous uh, way of communication. So when do we need a synchronous way of communication is basically, for example, uh, there are a couple of microservices which also want uh, their data to be updated. So first of all, you guys know that every microservice will have its own databases, right? So in that case, say for example, uh, an order is placed uh, in this microservices, say this is an order um, microservice, and every other microservice also wants to know about when an order is placed. How do we basically uh, uh, send that information to all of these microservices that an order is placed? We can't have a one database which all of these microservices shares. This is anti-pattern. So what we can do is we can build a data pipeline like system, which by using um, uh, queues. How, what happens now is when an order is placed to this microservices, this microservices microservice basically sends a message to this queue, okay? And then all the microservices which are basically listening to this queue will get updated that a order is placed and they will basically write into their respective databases. For example, like there is this microservice um, or maybe, yeah, let's, let's say, this microservice um, has to send data to these two microservices. All these two microservices are dependent on this microservice. What happens now is this the microservice one basically writes some data, order data to this, uh, these two queues, and it will be consumed by MS3 and also MS4, okay? And it can also make a synchronous call here, or it can, Um, send that information here and maybe MS2 is also consuming from there. 
So basically, every uh, data exchange actually happens asynchronously using queues. And if you see here, there are no synchronous call. So the response will be much faster. All you have to make sure is the message is written into the queue. So this is one way to you know, send the data uh, bit, you know, to different microservices or share the data across microservices without using synchronous communication. It is always good to have a, a, a synchronous way of communicating between microservices because for the reason, now they are not really you know, tightly coupled. Even though, for example, if this microservices goes down, we are, this microservices is not really impacted from this because the queue is up. This microservices can always send a message to this queue. Even though this microservice is not available right now, when it comes back, it will always consume all the data which was loaded into that queue and then it executes what we're supposed to do. The same is the case with these two as well. So this is not really tightly coupled to these services also, and they are not really, this microservice is not really affected by the availability of these microservices as well. That's the very um, important thing uh, in microservices because they are isolated now, right? This is uh, what the asynchronous way of communication. So let's understand what, is the, what are the advantages. The APIs will be faster for the reason, for the same reason that we are not really making any synchronous call. And we're not waiting for the response to be returned from the other microservices. All we are doing is updating the queues and then we are just returning the response, doing whatever process we are supposed to do. So the APIs will be much faster and the, the services are decoupled now. Now, as I already mentioned, they are not really affected by the availability of these services. All we have to make sure is the queue is available. Um, and the third one is works even when the services are down. That's one the same, right? And the fourth one is no need for service discovery. It's also one more important thing. We all understood what is service discovery. Now this microservices doesn't really care about what is the network address for this microservice, this and this. All it has to know is what is the address for the distributed queue and the queue name or the topic name. That's all it knows, uh, need to know. And that can be hard coded. Um, so you don't really need you know, service discoverability here. So that's the advantages. Now, what are the disadvantages of using a synchronous um, you know, way of communicating between microservices? Is the design will be complicated. So if you see in the previous uh, synchronous way of communication, it's, it's, it was very simple, right? But now there are a lot of components here. There's queue, there's um, that these microservices are talking to this queue and this also talks to this queue. There is monitoring in between, and this is distributed. We need to maintain this queues. The, the design will be complex, um, but the system works well and it is decoupled. Um, the second disadvantage is process latency. What it really means is, say for example, if this queue is overloaded and if this service is not really scaled, it could be that this the, whatever it is this microservice was supposed to do might have been delayed um, than the expected time. If it was synchronous uh, processing, then we are sure that by the time uh, we get the response from microservice one, we have finished all of the processing. Uh, but in this case, we can't expect always these, uh, this microservice um, has finished its job. So there could be an additional delay or if, if it is overloaded. Um, the third one is monitoring cost or running also the running cost of the queue. So earlier we were making direct calls over the network, but now since we have introduced a buffer or a queue in between, now we have to deploy this also and we have to make it reliable and fault tolerant so we will be distributing. So it incurs you know, running cost for the queues as well and also monitoring costs um, to monitor all the data flow happening through the queue. So it increases the cost, uh, the billing. So, so these are the advantages and disadvantages of um, asynchronous inter-service communi inter communication. I hope you guys understood all of this.